face this. Because it's just too, it's just too perfect that they, they, they knew, they paid attention to that. They paid close attention. to that. Right, right. We, he, Jordan, Ma- Jordan Maxwell, trust, Jordan Maxwell trusted me. You know, he, tr- he uh, Jordan Maxwell trusted me. You know what I mean? He brought me into his company, and he knew I was a loyal fan of his. I told him, I said, man, I've been following your work for ten years, and he knew I wasn't lying. Like you can't fake that. Like he, he, I explained to him what research I was doing. I explained to him what I knew about his research, so. He could tell by the way I was explaining the research. He knew I wasn't lying. You know what I mean? Right. And we just went out. He, he was really cool. He was really cool. You know, he was really cool. And he's an old timer. And you got to respect. That's the, that's the bad thing. That's the one thing I don't like about what happened between me and Jordan. It makes me look disrespectful to old timers, to older people. And yeah. I was always raised to respect older people. Like if somebody is older than you, you got to show them some level of respect. And so... That's what kind of hurt me about the altercation that happened between us. But, you know, Jordan Maxwell trusted me. You know what I mean? He let me into his life, and I let him into my life. And, you know, we had a disagreement or whatever. And, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. And then, you know, I talked a little bit on YouTube. He maybe did an interview about me and stuff. And it was kind of, you know, it wasn't that serious. But then these people came along and tried to pretend like they were him or it was his anger doing this to me. And that made me, like, flip. You know what I mean? Like, I was, like, flipping out. And I was in my mother's house for a month. I thought people were trying to kill me and stuff. And, you know, my family, like, my cousin was Lou Rawls, the singer. You know, Lou Rawls is from Chicago. He grew up as a guy. He grew up in the church doing gospel music. And, you know, hell, if anybody, shit, maybe I should be afraid of, of the mob now because... The people in my family from Chicago who are closer related to Lou, you know, they would have been, they, they, they would be, you know, Lou was involved with the Italians in, in, in California. You know, they put, they gave Lou a record deal. He was with Dean yeah. Martin, Frank Sinatra. So that's, yeah, so ma- gonna, that's making me look bad. Right? That's, that's, it's making me look bad with my family. You know what I mean? Cause they're like, what the fuck are you, t-? they're like, you know, they're sitting here like, what the fuck are you doing? You're on YouTube talking bad about Jordan Maxwell. And then Jordan Maxwell's in pictures with George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. And you know goddamn well these Jewish people in California are the people who gave Lou Raw his chance. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? And so the gang stalkers destroyed a lot of stuff. I just think, you know, I just think it's those guys like are they are they that petty or is it something else because I mean I feel like the Jonestown thing is more what would have set somebody off if you were close to something that hadn't been talked about well somebody did you know there was some stuff that happened with me and somebody really did try to hurt me you know what I mean somebody did try to hurt me and I think you know I it definitely wasn't any mafia guys you know what I'm saying if the mafia wanted to kill you if the mafia wanted to kill somebody they, they, you you wouldn't be alive. The FBI can't right. the, the F the FBI can't protect you from the mafia. You know what I'm saying? I'm smart right. enough to know that. I've been studying the the CIA my whole life. I know how it goes. And uh, but I never had any problem with no. I never seen any mafia guys. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do. You know what I mean? It, it might be the commun. Maybe it's the communist party. You know, because Jim Jones was communist or something. Maybe it's somebody from the Communist Party I, I, working for the FBI, the Communist Party with the FBI, probably. You know, I don't know. The federal, it, it was definitely some snitches. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like, I was curious because I was thinking about some of the stuff I can remember, and I can remember when I was like 10. Those were the times that uh, George Bush Sr. was at my house, and I swear to God, I'm pretty sure that he he said something to me about Jonestown and about how the CIA had studied that very carefully as far as, um, you, you know, ways of carrying off, like, false flags, but also of actually killing lots of people, and that's where he got his idea to have body doubles of himself. Like, Bush had, like, a couple of body doubles. Just, you yeah, Bush Senior. Yeah, he, Bush Senior had, yeah. double, had doubles. Most presidents do. Most presidents do have body doubles. You, you know what though? I, I want to add. Like, I want to continue with the Bush thing, but I want to ask you one more question though, real quick, before we jump off topic. Um, yeah. 
Damn, what was I gonna ask you? Okay, okay, okay. So with the with the like with it with the gang stalkers and all this stuff, like and the Cointel Pro and stuff, all this stuff, like how can people like cause these people do street theater and they make little children do like sexual stuff and they're probably recording child porn too, you know what I'm saying? And I'm right. thinking like like this stuff is like so strange. Most people don't know what you're talking about. Is it because they're doing everything covertly that these groups, like these groups, don't understand what's going on? Because because some mob, some some mob guys in New York w- might not really understand what's happening. Right. It's it's kind of like um, in my experience as a kid, it's like unless you were like in it somehow, like you wouldn't necessarily know what was going on unless it was really really blatant. Um. So like. You know, and even just living in a certain type of neighborhood, I mean, you kind of get sensitized to, like, noticing different patterns, right, for your own safety. So it's not that hard to see when something weird's going on. Um, and you know, I kind of think that the other people who do notice, I mean, I felt like I was living in a CAA-controlled neighborhood. So there were, like, neighbors that, like, just would happen to not be around on a weekend when stuff was happening in like broad daylight in our front yard you know like nobody listened to anybody screaming nobody was coming outside to see what was going on it was real fucking weird it was like children of the corn or something where you're like isolated you're isolated to anybody noticing and yet you're in like the middle of dallas you know what i mean like, it makes you know sense. right and i'm taking this stuff seriously because i'm trying to find out you know like if there's Freemasons involved in it, are these Scottish Rite Freemasons or York Rite Freemasons? And it, it creates what they're doing is create a lot of prob- a lot of problems because, like you're saying, when it comes to the CIA, you know, the CIA is is it, the CIA. I, I have a really good perception of how the CIA functions overall, and it's not as simple. Like the CIA, oftentimes is an umbrella term. And there's people, there's like 80% of the CIA is unknown. Like there's pe- most people in the CIA don't even know they're working for the CIA unless they're a card-carrying member from Langley. Right. You know what I mean? And that was one of the biggest problems with me studying Jim Jones and the People's Temple was it wasn't just about Jim Jones. It was about all the other stuff that was going on back in the 60s and 70s, 50s too, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I wasn't just talking about Jim Jones and what happened with the poison Kool-Aid and the body doubles. I was getting into banking and finance and things that went outside of Guyana and went outside of California. I mean, Jim Jones was involved with, with the leaders in North Korea the, uh, th- through, through the Communist Party. Right. So it could have been a foreign, there could be foreign operatives that have an issue with me. It might not be the United States government. These people, these people could be working for a foreign government, doing playing around with me, you know. Maybe they don't have oh, enough. No, you, you see what I'm saying? No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. No, because um, what my handlers told me is some of the stuff that's happening over here is is actually the work of a North Korean network. Um, like they're helping carry off some of the false flags, even though they're using Americans to do it. And um, yeah, if they <clears throat> if they want to wage it's like silent warfare against us. If they've got a problem with you, it could have been. Then, there was some, yeah. then there's other people. Then there's other people I have concerns about too. Because in my first interview with Jordan Maxwell, I talked about Kenneth Anger, and Kenneth Anger, Kenneth Anger was a child actor from back in the 1950s, and Kenneth Anger, it, of course, is a member of Ordo Templi Orientis. Kenneth Anger, even everybody knows Kenneth Anger is a high-ranking Ordo Templi Orientis member which is a magician mason right and you know people like kenneth anchor might be watching this on youtube and he might be interested in what's going on so he might he may ask a couple private investigators say hey this jamil guy mentioned me in the interview and i'm concerned about what's going on with him because i don't want anything to reflect badly on me so he might have somebody look into the issue and follow me around a little bit just to make sure i'm okay or to make sure he's okay and then, right. and then his name could get brought into it, and then everybody will think Ordo Templi Orientis in California was involved. You see what I'm saying? And so that's the problem with this stuff is because some real mafia guys might actually show up in Muskegon and follow me around a little bit, 
not meaning to harm me, just trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Who are all these other people following me around? It doesn't mean they want to hurt anybody. They just want to know what's going on. And that's the problem with these criminals is because all these other people are, are swooped up in this stuff and I'm just one guy. I can't defend... You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't defend the whole world from... You know, I just want to be left... I'm just one guy in Michigan on the internet. I just want to be left alone. Like, I met, I met Kenneth Anger... He was a really nice guy. When I met him, I knew he was a member of the OTO. I didn't have any problem with the OTO. I still watch Kenneth Anger on YouTube. I like Kenneth Anger. He was a friend of Bobby Boussoulet from the Manson family. I know all that stuff. I don't have any problem with him. You know what I mean? I might even email him to, to ask him what the hell's going on. You know, I might need his help. Hell, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, that's the problem with these criminals in Norton Shores. You know? I wish I could help you, man. It's pretty, it's pretty difficult thing to untangle. 